Hey, could you introduce yourself and how you've got involved in crypto and blockchain? So my name is Matej Michalko and I'm founder and president of Decent, uh, which is a blockchain content distribution network and uh, how I got involved in blockchain. So there was a long time ago, almost seven years ago, uh, I started to mine Bitcoin just by chance uh, because uh, basically after the crisis with Greece, right, it was in 2010, I lost a lot of money on uh, on the fiat currency and uh, basically then I started to Google, you know, about some alternative means of payment, right, and I found out about Bitcoin. Bitcoin. And since that time, I became full time in Bitcoin. So I founded the first uh, Bitcoin marketing agency in the world. Uh, I was a Bitcoin miner. I had a few mining farms as well. Uh, I organized a couple of conferences. We actually met three years ago with Richard Stallman. Right, in Austria. Uh, in Austria, three years ago, Central European Bitcoin Expo. Richard Stallman, uh, Vitalik Buterin. I also organized the first international Bitcoin conference in China, in Shanghai, Bitcoin Expo 2014. Not sure whether you, you were there and a couple of, couple of other stuff so I was all involved also in legal stuff with Bitcoin in 2012 2013 uh, so I spent a couple of months in the Isle of Man uh, trying to set up a regulation for uh, cryptocurrencies and, and Bitcoin uh, unfortunately we did not manage to do that but this is not, not a problem because three years ago I found it decent uh, which is the startup I'm, I'm in uh, uh, since, since then full time did everything go as you planned with launching your ICO? Honestly, not really. Uh, we, we've been among the first ones. What's doing, wrong? Uh, well, I'm not saying wrong. It went probably even better as we as we expected. Oh. Uh, but it was not as planned at all. Uh, because it's very hard uh, to have a plan for an ICO even, even now, where the ecosystem is more mature. We have done the ICO in September 2016. And it took us two months to raise about 6,000 Bitcoins, uh, which was very, very good for the time. And this is as much as we needed. Uh, but... Uh, it we it it went so so much better as we as we thought you know at the at the at the, at the very beginning. So uh, we got a strong support from the community in China and the time and from the communities in Europe and the the US. Uh, but I have to say that the situation with the ICO markets to today changed a lot from the time that we were doing it more than one year ago. So what difficulties did you face during the preparation process and the token sale? Difficulties, okay, there were a lot of difficulties. Uh, basically, uh, the preparation process was only about <laughs> the difficulties, I, I have to say, okay. and a lot of fun, difficulties and a lot of fun. Uh, so uh, we had to set up our system, right, for raising uh, the uh, the coins, the bitcoins from people. We have done it not on Ethereum, because at that time Ethereum was not that mature as we as we, as we thought it, it might be. Uh, so we have done it through a website right and we've been collecting bitcoin addresses of people in a database uh, so we had a lot of uh, issues you know to to set up this correctly and even the demand was so high you know at the, at the very beginning that our system crashed the very first day and we had to postpone the ico for one day so uh, we underestimated basically the demand for for those for those tokens for digital content tokens for this city so i think this was the biggest difficulty that we that we faced and probably the second one was to design the ico process uh, properly to satisfy both the backers and uh, you know the other community I mean the, the businesses that are now already you know using using our our system so there those are two things yeah and and maybe third thing is probably the communication across cultures because we have a established team in China as well and also in Europe right so uh, it was kind of you know to keep uh, and, and we are still facing this difficulty right to, to keep the communication you know between the different time zones and different cultures because people work very very differently in Europe and very differently in China. Was your marketing and PR campaign successful? Yeah, definitely yes, definitely very successful and uh, we've got strong support from Cointelegraph as well, which uh, we can <laughs> thank you. <laughs> we, uh, we've been you know, in touch with Cointelegraph since a couple of couple of years, so basically since the start of Cointelegraph in 2013, right? So, uh, you know, I, I, have to, I have to say it was very, very, very successful um, uh, from, from the point of, you know, even if you look at the number of participants during the first day of our of our ICO, it was much higher at, than even our technicians, even our tech, the technical staff expected. So from this point of view, it was really successful to get people. Yes, interesting. There is a huge, yeah, thank you. <laughs> there is a huge, uh, huge, huge demand still for those those tokens. 
And how is your project doing by now? We launched blockchain product the 30th of June 2017. So it took us about seven months after the ICO to launch the actual product. We did not release any tokens before launching the actual product, right? This was our philosophy, this was our strategy. Do not let people just speculate, Del deliver a real product after launch tokens. Around. This is what we communicate to the community and was very appreciated uh, the, uh, from, from all, all, the, all the people in our community. So we launched, we launched our, our product on 30th of June, so it's something like half, half a year ago. And we stirred, uh, we managed to stir a massive interest uh, from both the Eastern markets and the Western markets. So my colleague, uh, another founder of this and Mate is now in New York attending meetings with IFP, uh, which is very interested in using our solution for movie distribution, even tickets and so on. So IFP, you know, we are talking about, you know, Hollywood, about the US, about the big names. And at the same time on my side, I managed to secure a partnership with um, a game distributor in uh, emerging markets. So we are talking about Indonesia, India, uh, Thailand, uh, what else is there, uh, Philippines, uh, Vietnam, uh, Africa and uh, South America uh, with 100 million MAU, 100 million monthly active users. Just for your reference, Facebook had 2 billion MAU um, uh, in July. So we have a partnership with them, they distribute games on kind of the cheap OEM Android phones. Uh, across across uh, the emerging markets uh, and uh, they are going to put their content off on our platform in Q1, Q1 next year. So there is a lot of exciting things. Those are the two biggest projects that we currently have. The interest, of our te the interest in our technology is, is, is huge. Congratulations. If you have any advice for people who are looking to start their own ICO? Sure, uh, advice. So I have done an ICO last year, so I'm probably not the best one to, <laughs> to advise because the situation changed a lot right. since that time. But what I want to say um, is that have a real product and, and the product market fit, right? Think about the product market fit. It's, you know, a lot of people think that ICO is just, okay, I do white paper and people send me some tokens. Um, it doesn't work like this, you know. Think think about the business model, right? How would this work, you know, to be sustainable over time, right? How would this work? The business model is very important to have this figure out, uh, and uh, and also do it uh, legally, uh, well, properly, right? There are a lot of countries that offer, you know, some sandbox for ICOs. You know, we can we can mention, you know, Singapore, Switzerland. There is Gibraltar on the way. Uh, you know, Taiwan is doing something. So there are a lot of lot of places. Do it properly, uh, from the legal point of view. It's it's very important to have. This, this properly because uh, you know in some countries the laws can be retroactive right and uh, it, it uh, can cannot be not be good for for the future of the project right no one wants his or her project to get get close so so the legal legal due care and due diligence is is very important and uh, Probably I would mention we had one uh, ICO project we are not directly involved, but they are basically using uh, just our technology and uh, they do it in Switzerland, you know, so it's called uh, Sofia TX. Uh, they are the world's first uh, open source blockchain platform for SAP. So it's a platform that has 5 million uh, active developers all over the world and they are doing the world's first open source blockchain for them and they are starting next week. So this is, this is just one of the one of the examples of how can one, one do it, one do it properly. But again, I'm not directly. <laughs> directly involved. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.